lots of holly. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so how do you make your vision? We've all been talking about our visions and how the promised land, what the promised land looks like for each of us in our ventures. So how are we going to get that vision into a business model? Right? How do you fit paradise into practicality? Um, so that's what, that's what we're going to be working on from here on in, is um, talking about the outcome, the output, the activities, and then go, we're going to go back. So if this was our, um, if this was the outcome, we're going we're gonna to map it out and see what outputs we need also. Those were those circles on that map we just saw. And then what inputs we are going to, what's going to go into the machine, you know, what inputs we need. Sorry about this. And then what activities will be part of the input. So that's where we're going to go backwards now as we plan this out to really figure out what is the best route as the roadmap to really make our own roadmap and look at how we're going to get to the outcomes we want. Okay, build a business model. Bring your tools with you today. Um, <laughs> so we'll pair up. I don't know. Are we actually not? Okay. okay. So we'll simulatively yeah. pair up. And, um, so this would take. Uh, this would be something right. you guys could do in say a ten minute exercise, a fifteen minute right. exercise. You can do it in a seven minute exercise, depending on on how your schedule's going that day. Okay. Right. So then this will be it's our. Like chance. a balcony comment. Uh, not yeah. in the floor. No, that's cool. 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 So this is our chance to you know to really do some to do some building or actually deconstructing and rebuilding and fitting our vision of the promised land, this land of milk and honey, into how we're going to get there by taking a step back and looking at fitting into each of our models. Great job! Thank you <laughs> for sharing. Um, okay, so we we started out today actually looking at outcomes. And it's not that uncommon to, you know, this is, this is where we want to be, thinking of our outcome, looking at that picture. Now, it's not uncommon in the nonprofit world or other ventures to look at the activities. Like, this is what I want to do. You know, this is what I want to do. This isn't gonna how I'm going to do it. And we're going to try to shift from that and see what, you know, to take a different picture, look at our outcomes, our intended outcomes are from different perspectives. Because sometimes the way we plan things just doesn't work. Anyone have that experience ever? <laughs> um, okay, so R E S P E C T, your O U T P U Ts. Okay, um, um, okay, let's just take it a little. Can someone just give me an example from their venture? What is an output? What is one of the outputs? One of the things that are t come out of the machinery? of what you're doing. Fellows. 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 Live fellows. <laughs> Anything? Anything? <laughs> Great. So the output, and we can measure. What can we measure about the fellows? How many there are, how many get funded, how many you know are successful two years out, all sorts of things. But they're outputs, right? OK, those are the outputs. You know, how tall they are, yeah. <laughs> um, how many fingers, but right, exactly what they're doing. We can really quantify that. But then what about, what are the, um, what's the outcome in your model? The uh, community impact, uh, new leaders, new leaders in the community. Ten years down, raise numbers of uh, of donors and volunteers, creative new ideas, whole system out, you know, outcome. Great. So the out. So here we're talking. Oops. About my <laughs> need to learn about markers. Okay. Here's the fellow, the output, and then the outcome is more community model and growth, which yep. I'll just simplify like that. So this is a difference. And this, the fellows are working towards this. And there is a lot of them. And we measured them. And they're very nice looking, as you can see. Handsome group. Um, OK, so the outputs, as everyone said, are, developed, are determined by a market in that they have to, um, there has to be a demand for them. If we don't need fellows, chances are they wouldn't have a place to go. If, there, if there's no use for the fellows in the marketplace, if their ventures can't be brought to market, they might not be as useful. They might, there might not be a need to keep developing them to change, to create this communal change. We might create communal change by just um, inviting people to parties or giving them money or something. So the fellows are, are something that we're really work using to, to create our greater output. And um, 
And there, so this provides something that we can compare to other things. What other organizations are creating fellows? What do they look like? How many are they? Do they get funding? What are, you know, how are they doing? Are they, how many people are they interacting with? Where are they located? So this is something we can really compare on one level. Um, and then in terms of, okay. I don't know, anyone have anything to add on this? About a relationships of outputs and the market? The, the, the market has to want what you are outputting. Right. Mm -hmm. And and one, one way of talking about the comparison between you and other ventures is how successfully the market feels you are satisfying that one. Right, and does it, do you have an example from your own venture? Or um, a venture you've been involved with? Uh, not an easy one, but I think it's easy to talk about present tense and say that you know the 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 addressable market of present tense can clearly see the value I think of the fellows that get put out and the ventures that they produce, and then I, I I'm sure if we thought for a moment we could come up with some other equally laudable programs whose outputs are not so clearly understood by their market. Right, exactly, and I think an interesting example is that there are several markets. For the fellows, or or for or for the present tense programming. I mean, one is fellows, but there it exists. In, there are other ways to get to this goal, and the fellows are in numerous places with num numerous ventures. So, it's definitely a mark of success. Thank you. Okay, revenue. That's the bottom line. The first bottom line, right? So, how? So. Who here has a revenue model for your, who's thought about the revenue model for their venture that's going to get you to the promised land? Anyone have done any work on that before? Um, no worries, that's what we're here to work on. <laughs> um, but, um, okay, so the idea of a revenue model, just because we're doing good doesn't mean we have to skip the economics and the numbers, okay? Because that's part of getting to the promised land. It's not all fun and games, as we know. So. Things to think about, who's the customer? And not only what does the customer want, but what does the customer value? Um, give you an example from my personal life. I like coffee. I, a lot, probably too much. I, um, I don't care a ton about the quality of the coffee, but the more coffee I drink, the more I learn what's important to me. And I have a store where I go downtown, and I was there maybe a year ago, and I heard them call the customers by their name, and I said, that's what I want. For me, it's not about the coffee. I could get my coffee anywhere, but I like someone to know my name, and I like them to ask me how my work is doing. So I'm willing to pay $2 for that cup of coffee because it's a value. And that keeps me going back because now I chat with them. So they're providing that value. And the owner, I know the owner's thinking about it because I talked to him about the people he hires, and he said, oh yeah, they're all great, and he has activities. He brings his staff out to cultivate their relationships so they're friendly with each other. Who doesn't want to go into a coffee place where everyone's chatting and construction workers are bringing them ribs? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're providing who that they cooked at home. They're providing a value that's more than the coffee. I mean, coffee buffs like it, but there's something else. They're thinking about what people are looking for, what the cup of coffee encapsulates. Um, so that's something to think about. What are your customers? What can you bring to your customers that someone who's providing something similar might not bring? What's differentiating you? And on both both bottom lines, actually, you know, from the monetary value and also from the social business model. Um, okay, so we said outputs, fellows here or the iPhone are what's going to bring in the money. But but then they're also giving value. They're providing value to customers. So the cup of coffee is giving. Well, I don't know. I don't know if the cup of coffee is giving me the value, but it's getting me up. Yeah. So I have a question about the example that you that you yeah. gave. Like, how do you know when? And I'm thinking about this for my venture. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know when, like the social, like in your case, the social value that that you said you as a customer value, you're right. willing to pay whatever twenty cents more for that for somebody right. knowing your name and right. for that you know feeling of sort of camaraderie that you. That you right. sense when you walk into the shop. So, like, how do we, when we're thinking about our ventures, how do we know whether X social value is worth like X percent increase in revenue? Like, how do we that's, figure that out? That's a great question. I 
think that would be part of the environmental scan, looking at what other people are doing and seeing, they taking a close look at other people's business and what's really looking below the surface or really experiencing it a few times. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that's part of the market research phase or the prototype that we're going to talk about. I think you have to, you have to do that analysis. I mean, I can't, I can't be sure that my coffee guy did that. You know, maybe that he's not a social entrepreneur per se, but he has created a social value. So it, you know, it could be an offshoot, but it could also be something that one sets out to provide. How much does it cost to interview people who have great personality skills? How much time is it worth your time? You know, to or how do you set up your HR process to bring those people in? I mean, I mean it sounds like question. it was very deliberate. I mean, it sounds like at some point he said, here's, here's how we're going to differentiate. And then, right. he, I don't know, maybe he fluctuated with the prices a little bit, charging you know, 50 cents more, and then figured out, oh, well, people aren't willing to pay 50 cents more, but they're willing to pay a quarter more. Yeah, and he, there could be places that charge more for less interpersonal reaction, too. So Could you find it in your outcome also? Like, if my outcome is I'd like to create a place that you know, is X, Y, Z, then my output would be, like the activities and outputs that I would put into that would help me like, create a place that is a friendly coffee shop, because that's what I'm going for. You want to yeah. create a friendly coffee shop? So like, if, that's, if that's what he wants, like he wants mm -hmm. this like, warm environment, so then he'd like, step back and say, well, the activities would be taking my staff on a retreat, right. you know, they, or having them know people's names, and then the outputs would be that they actually do that, and the outcome is that I have to go Wouldn't the outcome yeah. be the the result of having a friendly coffee shop. The, out, the outcome isn't the friendly coffee shop. The outcome is the result of that, which is your outcome. But the I outcome is the ribs. Somebody bringing the ribs the in result. or having it's a... The, result the outcome is of people are coming back. You have a good clientele, loyal clientele, happy employees. Did. And this is these, um, the, <coughs> yeah, the interactions so are part the, of the... The outcome would really be a happier community because right. you just made a, a friendly coffee shop. But there, there's a distinction in there about demand too. That some people, some kinds of, some kinds of outputs are things that the, the customer recognizes themselves to want and need, and some are ones that they just gravitate to for some reason they can't articulate. Right. That these are things we can look at in our market research yes. and environmental scan. That even if the customer is not noticing it, we can notice. And again, having to do with both bottom lines. Interesting. Thanks for this example. Okay, so that's where we're going to focus, the outcome, right? This community of the growing community, the, the integrated community of the coffee shop, the, um, the present, the more open Jewish community of different facets and people who want to learn and are ready to absorb different, different ways of thinking and training. The, um, the outcome of, a of putting people in contact and making them look sleek and savvy even though they were before. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing to keep in mind is that the outputs are providing a value to a specific target market. That coffee shop is giving me a sense of belonging or personness. And, um, and that, through that value, a social venture will bring an intended outcome. So if the co I know another coffee shop in Brooklyn, it's actually run by a church. And um, it's a nonprofit coffee shop, but so they're they're pr they're also pretty friendly. I don't go there every day, so I don't know. But um, but their intended outcome is ultimately providing more money for the church and sustaining that community, and that that create that becomes a social venture because they're not just looking at the bottom line, like sort of like the present tense model is this expanded. And um, just a reminder that that is what we're aiming for, the promised land flowing with milk and honey, abundance, a place where people are comfortable and sharing. And that's where we're really keeping our eyes on the prize to go. So now we'll take a moment and think about how you can change your output. You know, present, one thing present tense uses is the fellows to get to where it's going. What, and, and then there are certain other models too that we discussed earlier. Um, anyone remember any of those? Working that with professionals that are already in the existing institution. Exactly, working with professionals who are there. So that's another way to change the output to still work toward the same desired result. So just say, take a sec, think about what your outcome is, where you're heading in the promised land, and if there's an out another output, you can you might be able to substitute. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
Great. Anyone want to share what they found? Anyone have an example from their conversation, from your business, from your own venture, or maybe someone else's, or one you've seen? Well, I was just going to consider the most recent example you gave with the coffee shop to raise mm -hmm. money in a community for this church. I mean, that could be done through a variety of different outputs. You wouldn't need to put together a coffee shop, but rather a bakery or a car wash. I mean, a book sale. I, I don't know. There are a variety of different, you know, outputs that you could produce that would lead to that desired outcome. Right. Exactly. I mean, they. It is in Park Slope, Brooklyn, so you see why they may have chosen a, a <laughs> coffee shop over a um, car wash. But car wash could, you know, could work just as well in a in a time. Exactly. Thank you. So thanks for sharing that and for expanding your thinking, thinking of new pathways to the promised land, new ways to get this milk and honey that's going to sustain us. Um, okay. How do we let people know that we have that we have a new car wash? Um, are we going to tell them all about how we got, what, how, what are you going to say when you have um, the milk and honey car wash in Manhattan? Um, how do we spread the word? Because we've been talking about creating models and roadmaps and then looking, really looking at our own process. And um, what's different about this process and how we communicate with people about it? Let's say we have bees. We have a new crop of honey to get out there. Are we going to tell them about... What are we going to let people know when we, you know, we have this fresh new honey just collected, um, e friendly, friendly honey raised according to every standard of eco. Tell them about the, the impact and the, the outcome and how it would, they would benefit from it and try to be concise. Okay, tastes good. Less filling. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, okay, tell them how it's going to benefit them. So you mean we're not telling them about like all our, you know, how we thought, oh, well, we really wanted to produce honey, but first we're going to import it from Sri Lanka, but they didn't have a lot of bees there. So it sounds like that's not part of what you're saying. Well, you get into that if they want that information, but you, you really want to tell them uh, sim the sim in the simplest form what it is and how they'll benefit from it. Okay, exactly. First step, what do you have, how it's going to help, what difference it makes. Like the coffee shop, I didn't. The guy when I walked in there, he didn't say, "Oh yeah, I take my employees out bowling." He said, "Do you want a small, medium, or large?" You know, um, this is um, this is some. Um, or he said, "You know, this coffee." Some guy there said, "This coffee is from blah blah." I don't know where it's from because I don't care. I want um, just you know that's not. But he gave me the basics, and then over time, I learned more as I became friendly to people. So exactly, tell them about what you're getting. And then when people want to know more, that's when you can talk about what's special, how you create value, that you've um, been whispering to your bees from um, passages of Torah every <laughs> Thursday. That's when you can let them know really your secret. But they might not want to know that. You, you, know, you might not want to tell that to everyone. OK, so now we're going to talk about the model, the deliverable. We're topless. What's at the bottom? You know, the double bottom line, double top. Um, what do you, what do you, how are you going to create value? Where does the value come from? What is, what is the, the nitty gritty of your milk and honey? So um, here's an assignment. We're going to take a look at the diagrams and go through it and look at how much each input costs. This is a bit of what we were talking about before. How do we make these assessments of what's worth it and what's not? So we're going to really get to the numbers and look at assigning costs. And um, so for each, uh, we don't have the thing with us right now, but for each, um, get out your diagrams. For each input, list what its cost will be. So in this model of the coffee, how much does it cost for the beans? Not only the beans, but what about getting the beans there? So how much is that input of the coffee? And then if you want to talk about the input of staff training, that would be how much does it cost to go bowling, or and then how much um, managerial time does it cost to plan that training? the bowling training. Um, and then think about how much you can, on the other side, this is where we talk about how much it costs. How much can, what, how much will the market bear in terms of the cost of a cup of coffee? I don't know, I've seen some stores where it's five or six dollars, but um, depends what your, what the value is associated with that, right? Um, and if, if that represents a milk and honey for someone, like at the Nespresso store, I, it's, 
yeah, it's worth it, I think, for a lot of European tourists because it's giving them a feeling of chic New York, which you can't get from the coffee cart. You know, so no surprise. And this is clearly, it looks like it's been part of their business model, plan that out. So, um, okay, so we're gonna think about the numbers associated with the different steps. And please test your product. If the honey's not good, it doesn't matter how many um, pass, how many tour portions it's heard. <laughs> Which synagogue, it has to be good. We have to make sure it's working and it's what we were intending, that the output is up to snuff. Because, for example, if they are, we have fellows who aren't, who, who are communicating their messages really well, it's gonna lead to our desired result. That's not the case. <laughs> we're gonna have a different, we're not gonna have the outcome we want. And the whole system, it's, what's that called? Um, bee colony collapse? And then, you know, the collapse disorder, that, that's what's gonna happen. So please test what test your outputs because they're a symbol of how the machine's working. And that includes looking at your activities and really revising the model, making the model and then revising it. And you know, your our vision of our own outputs could be different from others. Maybe someone who's allergic to bees has no interest in honey. Okay, let's not focus on them. Or maybe they can only they're looking for something different in the honey. So let's see how other people are considering our outputs. Maybe someone doesn't like the iPhone because it's not the color they want, so it's not successful for that market. It's okay, you know, so the, to see how it's working with other people. And thank you. We're going to ask everyone to take two minutes quietly to write down bullet points of things that they thought of that we're going to be able to bring up at the end of the, uh, uh, at the feedback session after Jenny presents. Um, these can be things specifically uh, directed towards Laura, ideas for her, suggestions. This can also be a, um, uh, things that you're thinking in general about the slide, what would make it easier and more comprehensible. Whatever you have, spend two minutes now quietly to write that down so that we don't lose it. Uh, and we're going to get up Jenny's presentation and she's going to kick off. She emotes it.